She chairs the Senate Higher Ed and Workforce Development Committee. Senator Terry Bonoff is here to talk a little bit about how Minnesota is developing its workforce. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Julie. So, Senator, let's begin with Dr. Tom Stinson. When he announced his retirement the other day, he stated essentially what he believes makes Minnesota unique and a step above a lot of other states is the high quality workforce here. As chair, of the higher ed finance division, do you believe that the quality of Minnesota's workforce is currently on an upward trend or a downward slope? Well, I would certainly not say a downward slope. I think we have some pressing challenges before us and that we have to attack them with rigor and with velocity. And what I mean by that is Dr. Stinson has been saying for quite some time that we have a problem because we have a workforce that's aging that's gonna be really depleted in a major way as the baby boomers retire. And then we have this up and coming new generation that is very different than our traditional workforce has always been in Minnesota. It is far more diverse, there are far more more economic challenges facing this new generation of young people. They say that in the next 10 years, if you look at who's in our classrooms, that the um, current uh, you know, Caucasian majority may in fact be the minority. And so we have that tremendous achievement gap in our country. And so if we don't figure out how to make sure that this up and coming generation is educated to be our future leaders, then we really will be in trouble. Now, we're still graduating, you know, seniors who have the highest ACT scores in the nation. We have um, very strong results in terms of uh, kids going on to post-secondary. So that's why I would say we are not in a decline, but we must confront our future with um, you know, with eyes wide open. And so what do you think some of the keys are to ensure that Minnesota does have a quality workforce in the future? Well, number one, the vision of our higher ed um, committee and our mission was to ensure that each and every Minnesota student has some form of post-secondary completion. And so the statistics say you have to have approximately 70% of your young people having some post-secondary completion. And so we said we weren't gonna just say, oh, 30% gone, we were gonna say each and every. And so given that mission, we froze tuition, uh, we paid for that both at Minsku and at the university, and we um, began to invest in our state grant program. The key is access and affordability to keep that high quality education, looking at what are gonna be the job needs of tomorrow, what are gonna be the areas of economic growth for our state, and then make sure that our kids are able to access the training to deliver on those jobs. So Senator, let's talk a little bit about that tuition freeze because it is in, it's for two years in both the Minsky system and the University of Minnesota. However, it does not work, it, it's not in place for grad students or a lot of the professional courses. So given that, Given the fact that they are not exempt from these tuition increases, and I believe the uh, law school at the U was looking at a 9% tuition oh. jump, and it was a little over 2% for the medical school, can you, how does that fit into this formula, this equation of developing work for a quality workforce, when these are, in fact, a lot of quality potential workforce members? Well, let's look at that. So um, I wish that the grad school was not instituting those high tuition hikes. And maybe that is something that we as a legislature should tackle moving forward. But when we're talking about the workforce shortage, that's not what we're talking about. We are really not talking about that sector. We're talking about this um, new generation of students that we are trying to to get into our Minsky system at an affordable rate. We're trying to get into the University of Minnesota and we're trying to lower the overall cost of student debt. Now, I don't like that our graduate students are also facing the tremendous pressure that is associated with student debt and in particular the medical school because we are going to have a shortage of doctors. But in many cases those doctor shortages exist in rural Minnesota so there is provisions that we provide for our state to have loan repayment debt forgiveness for those hard to fill areas. So I think you have to look strategically where are your problem areas, 
you know, you can't attack everything at once. What are you going to deal with first? What's most pressing? And so I think we did that this legislative session. Is there more work to do? Absolutely. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but I had another question for you about a relatively new trend of massive online open courses, also known as MOOCs, something that you are a proponent of. Critics that contend, though, that because there are literally thousands of students who can be taking this class online, that it isn't necessarily a quality course, therefore not necessarily adding to a quality workforce. So do you think that MOOCs add to or take away from a quality workforce? I'd say add to, and I disagree with that assessment. You know, um, right now, who's doing MOOCs are leading professors at Stanford, at MIT, at Harvard. They're the ones to jump in first. They are very high quality professors. Then there's a question of, well, is it a high quality experience? And that really rests on the students. But one of the things we put in the higher ed bill to facilitate making sure it was high quality is a provision that allows students to pay a small fee to um, take an exam to make sure that, in fact, um, they did complete the quality work. And so there's an organization set up called uh, ACE, um, accredited something something you know that will allow them to demonstrate that they did in fact learn the course work you know as stated and so I think that it's important that there be accountability measures for our students and for those professors you can hear that there's a a big drop-off rate so a student will sign up for a MOOC class but then they may not complete it and those are the growing pains but I think by putting in place some um, opportunities within the bill that said no these students you know can make sure that they finish the course and maybe even be allowed credit and that's really the hope that ultimately those types of courses will be blended with the traditional not a replacement but blended with so that kids can finish quicker and cheaper okay let's talk about the gaps that remain in workforce development that you would like to address next session so one of the gaps is around um, what it takes to be in the manufacturing sector. We have an emerging trend of uh, manufacturing growth, and there was a long time where we said, you know, manufacturing's gone. It's outsourced. We're no longer going to be doing that in our country. Well, that didn't prove true because we are the most innovative country, and, and here in Minnesota, we are very innovative. And I, in my own district, there's a whole swath of companies that are manufacturing, and they need um, people can run these very technical machinery and robotics equipment. And so we have to make sure these kids learn those skills. And so one of the things that will allow that is a new model um, of apprenticeship, whereby, for example, Dunwoody Institute has partnered with Bueller, which is in Plymouth, taken five students, and they're paying for them to get trained at Dunwoody, go to school, um, and work at Bueller, go back and forth and in three years complete their program with a certificate as well as a high paying job. Okay. Well, <laughs> Senator, I have one time for one last question. So okay. what advice would you have for people who are graduating from high school right now as they enter college? Where th should they direct their energies in your opinion? I think they should look at their ultimate goals and objectives and pick a school that both will allow them to have the kind of career that fulfills their dreams and their potentials but at the right price and really be questioning and and skeptical of um, taking on too much debt because that debt is pretty hard to get rid of once you've got it. Okay with those words Senator Terry Bonoff thank you for joining us we appreciate your time. Thank you very much.